Good morning, my name is Dave Brown. I'm the police chief in the city of Hemet, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2015 State of the City, hosted by Mayor Linda Krupa. I'd also like to recognize Mayor Pro Tem for the city of Hemet, Bonnie Wright. <laughs> city of Hemet Council Member Shelley Milne. We're also joined by our neighbor, San Jacinto Council Member Alonzo Ledesma. And former Hemet City Council members and mayors, Lori Van Arsdale and Robin Lowe. Thank you for being here. From the Saboba Foundation, Andrew Vallejos, thank you for being here. Murrieta City Council member, Randon Lane. And our third district supervisor and good friend, Mr. Chuck Washington, thank you for being here. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, our mayor to give the 2015 City of Hemet State of the City Address, Mayor Linda Krupa. Good morning. This is one of those occasions when you get here and you go, oh, what did I do to myself? This was my idea. So, bear with me. Um, we have, I have a prepared speech, and many of you know me and know that I don't do well with prepared speeches because I just like to speak from the heart and cover things. But there are a few things we need to go over this morning, and then I will share I, what I believe is the true Hemet and the true future for Hemet. So anyway, just to say, it's been a few years since we have done a state of the city. In fact, uh, the last time, I believe Robert Youssef and I, presently on council, are, were the only two people that were on council at that point. So we, it's been a while. So just a recap of the few years, as everyone knows, the recession hit us extremely hard. We were going along quite well. When it hit the downturn, at least a 25% reduction in property values, which was a reduction then in sales tax and property taxes. We, we started to uh, gain some ground. We franchised out our, our trash department, created an immediate uh, cash reserve and a, another revenue stream. And just when we thought we were getting a handle on that, the state came along and said, oops, we're taking your redevelopment money from you. And for us, it was at least $2 million a year and some other years more. Uh, you know, our demographics started changing during that same period of time. We had been an agricultural community and then a, a very high populated retirement community with a lot of disposable and discretionary income. With the downturn in the economy, the population changed, families were moving in, lower income families, and it, it all contributed to the erosion of the image of our city, a degradation of the quality of life in many areas, and created a lot of challenges for us. So let's come up to the present. We're gradually coming out of the recession. Our property tax values are increasing. According to the Southwest Realtor Report, uh, the month of July, and I was astounded by this figure, the residential single family transactions in the month of, of July for Hemet was over $35.5 million. That's revenue generated. That includes the unincorporated area, but it's still Hemet. The, uh, on further good news on that, the median price of, of single family homes in Hemet for the uh, month of August, prices are up 5% over 2014. Sales tax is rebounding, and while we're not back to where we were in 07, things are coming up, and it, it's making good changes. So let's talk about change and the successes that we've had at the city because change is the name of the game in Hemet going forward. If we don't change, we go nowhere. We'll start with our library. It's only open four days a week, but this is a great location. Circulation, which is the number of items checked out per year, over 450,000 items. 
serving over 1,500 people every day, they're open. 71,000 internet units this last year, internet users, and we, we have a couple people at the library who uh, specialize in passports. And this last year, they did the paperwork for 521 of our residents who needed passports. The thing about this that is constantly amazing to me is that when this library opened and as late as 2010, there were 25, 24 full-time employees that ran this library. Today, there's eight and a half full-time equivalents. Now you say, how do they keep up and improve and keep going? Well, number one, there's dedication of the employees. Number two, we have a host of volunteers at the library. And those volunteers pick up the slack. There's also a lot of automation. There's uh, automatic self-check, self-check for, for books and video, check-in, the computer classes that a lot of the volunteers give, family history in, in the uh, uh, heritage room downstairs, and forward thinking to lower some of the overhead costs. Uh, they, the library staff said, okay, let's do turf removal. Take out all of the grass at the library, put in drought tolerant, so through grant money from EM, uh, MWD, through EMWD, and with the volunteer assistance of Valley Beautiful, all of the grass was removed, drought tolerant was put in, and I believe if it hasn't been accomplished, there's going to be little signs by the plants that tell you what the plant is, why it's good, and that you can actually do it yourself. Let's go on to engineering. This is another, uh, I should say, a department that probably most people could care less about. And sorry about that, Stephen. Uh, but they do a lot of work. A lot, our road work, a lot of building, nothing would get done without this department. So I'm not going to highlight a whole lot of this stuff, but it's important to know that street widening, traffic signals, uh, sidewalk, missing links, street rehab, all of this stuff comes through our engineering department. And while I'm on that, we, we cut 150 some jobs at the city over the past few years. So all of this work has been going on and it's all been do done with m many fewer employees than what we had today. Upcoming projects that everybody will be happy about, signal at Warren and Esplanade, another signal at Warren and the Auto Mall, uh, pedestrian pathway connectivity, Gilbert Street rehab, storm drain, State Street storm drain, which everybody should be happy about, and we are working with the city of San Jacinto on that. We get into public works and the guys with the orange shirts. They do a lot of the jobs that engineering sends out. We don't notice them a whole lot, but they're doing roadways, cleanup, graffiti, vehicle inspection when PD and fire drive too fast or crack a vehicle or have a flat tire, they go over to Public Works at the yard and it gets taken care of. We have our water department, parks department, community special events. So when we have a parade, uh, Veterans Day, the Harvest Fest downtown, it's Public Works that does the majority of the setup, the signs for traffic control, the barricades, and every so often they have fun with Easter in the Park recent projects which has pleased a few many of our citizens is the shade structure at the lawn bowling facility and that may be something that some of you don't know we have but out at Gibble, Bar Gibble Park there is a great lawn bowling facility and uh, I guess you're if you're you can call it bocce ball if you're younger uh, it's a little different but it's close uh, they have installed LED lighting at PD for increased safety. They helped with the drought tolerant landscaping at the library. And they just go out and do a multiple amount of things with painting, cleaning, uh, and then we get to Weston Park. The LED uh, installation, the basketball court, playground, weather sensing, irrigation and timing. And I am told that the park will open next week. So that is good news to a lot of people and then we still have more work to do. Uh, one of the things that 
that uh, we have, and I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but if you have a, an iPhone, there is an app called YourGov, and you can upload, download, whichever way that goes, and actually use it to report graffiti, potholes, uh, whatever, you can take a picture of it, it can get sent to our uh, public works department, and uh, things get done faster so you don't have to make a phone call or anything like that, the old way. Let's go on to our fire department. In December of 2014, council voted to retain local control, thereby continuing delivery of high quality emergency fire and e emergency medical service. In February, we hired a permanent fire chief, implemented a comprehensive 90 to 120 day plan to improve service, conducted a fire department standards of coverage and deployment study, which tells us where we are, our strengths and our weaknesses, and also tells us the level of service that we should have for a community such as ours, and gives us ideas on attaining those goals. That's all in the future, because we have to come up with the money first. But slowly, we are rebuilding our fire department, expanding our services, and changing the way we do service because the majority of our calls are for medical and sending fire engines to medical calls isn't necessarily a smart way of doing business. Station 5 has been reopened to, to give coverage to the east side of town. We have purchased two fire engines, upgraded protective gear, improved frontline communication, engaged with the community to expand the CERT program and this uh, is an education class that usually lasts about four days, uh, brings people in from the community and teaches them uh, different ways to help in case of a disaster. We have established a new Hemet volunteer program. Now this isn't a volunteer firefighter. This is a volunteer program uh, that is modeled on the very successful Hemet PD volunteer program. And the, the motto or the, uh, the hopeful lines for the future, strategies that place the department in a position to successfully serve its future demand and risk in an effective and efficient manner. On to Hemet PD and the five-year strategic priorities. You all know we have faced numerous, numerous challenges with decreased numbers in our police department. We're slowly rebuilding that. Uh, Chief Dave Brown, who uh, is an ever-present figure in town, uh, has a good plan. He has worked very hard on getting programs going that creates a better face for the city and creates a safer community for all of our residents. We've had uh, an additional remodel on the building over here, which will improve our emergency and communications center. It is a state of the art that allows dispatch to do their job more efficiently and effectively and actually tracks where the patrol cars are so that they can respond to emergencies in a quicker manner. With a focus on Florida Avenue and the ROCKS team, we're concentrating on eliminate the, eliminating prostitution and the complaints. And as you can see from the chart from 2013 to <coughs> 2015, the, the number of complaints has been reduced. Now, I've got to tell you, when I first looked at this side, slide, I actually laughed out loud and went, OK, number of prostitute complaints. So what does that actually mean? <laughs> <laughs> does it mean that the prostitutes are complaining less? Or does it mean that they're servicing people better so they're not <laughs> complaining? Or does it mean we don't have as many on our streets? So you make up your own mind. Uh, but and that, that when I did look at that, I laughed so loud. Kathleen was uh, in, at her desk, and she, she said, is Bonnie in there with you? Because <laughs> Bonnie's laugh is infectious. Anyway, Chief Brown and the entire PD, yeah, I will say they are on constant, constant recruitment mode. Uh, at a swearing-in in June, 
uh, I challenged the chief and, and deputy chief Webb to give me a birthday present for my birthday in August. And that present that I wanted was the same number of officers as I was old. And I am happy to tell you that they only missed the mark by two weeks. So we now have as many officers as I am old. And tonight, I don't go there. <laughs> and as uh, Deputy Chief Webb said, oh, thank God you're not turning 75. And I said, you got it, but I could be. I could be. So tonight, we are actually attending graduation and swearing in of two new officers, which I believe, show, show me some fingers over there, Dave, Six, 68 and 69? I can't see that far. 67, 68, so we, we have, we've attained that magic number, so thank you, and we're growing. That is one of the priorities of, of this council, and I know of the community, is to increase the number of boots on the ground. <laughs> Going on to community development, uh, new projects, the Ramona Creek specific plan, uh, which includes up to 1,100 residential units, 500,000 square feet of commercial, retail, active living, everything you would want in a new development. This is out uh, uh, at Regent property, which is, for those of us who have been around for a while, is the O'Garrett property between uh, Myers and Warren, north of Florida. There's one last hurdle to go through uh, before getting clearances from all of the other agencies that we work with. And with the help of our county supervisor and a few other people, we are making that happen. So it is going through. It is going to be a, a wonderful development. And these things do take time. But it's also one of those things I hope that happens in my lifetime. The Southwest annexation. This is really an exciting thing. It, 995 acres of bare land, so we basically don't have to extend any services out there at this point. But it is going to the uh, uh, to LAFCO in September. This is a property owner driven annexation request. Uh, it is zoned as business park, industrial, commercial, office, and residential. It's in the southwest area, uh, west of Warren and south of Florida down past the airport, going down towards Domnagoni. The, to me, the exciting thing about that is that with the property request is that these property owners want to be in the city limits before they start developing their property. New residential co uh, construction in the city is up 15% over 13-14, uh, and developments such as McSweeney, Four Seasons, and Del Webb are all finishing out their existing tracks and there are 10 new tentative, tentative maps in the planning process. New businesses that have come to town, Sun Edison Solar on Acacia, and no, it's not a Costco behind that, those fences up there as we keep getting bombarded with. We would hope that one day we turn around and look and go, oh my God, it is a Costco. Uh, but it is a $30 million investment, and one of the good things that we get as a city is the street improvements on Acacia and Sanderson. We have people in the community who are in investing and reinvesting in, in the community, and Gosh Auto Group is one of those, with the new Chevy dealership, now called Gosh Chevy. Uh, and I believe a remodel going on of the Toyota were planned in the future, and Eric, we thank you for that. Uh, I bought a Ford this year. <laughs> it's called Buy Local because it works. Our Walmart uh, neighborhood market is scheduled to open on, I believe, January 6th of 2016, and this is going into the old Albertsons building, or if you've lived here long enough, the Smiths building, and I forget what it was before that. Uh, Hobby Lobby, Tractor Supply, and I'm going to really blow this name, so Alonzo, you can help me. La Mikawak. <laughs> Thank you. The ice cream store. Now, if you haven't been out there, as I have not, it is out in the Stater Brothers Center on, on Sanderson in Florida. 
And the reason I haven't been there yet is because every time I go, the line is out the door and around the corner. And everything I hear from people is that is the most wonderful. Not only feast for the eyes when you go in, but the ice cream is absolutely fantastic. So my, my hope is they'll expand and maybe open one downtown, maybe on the east side, maybe on the south side. We could have them all over. Uh, we have a new Sizzler, and I would imagine everybody's been there by now. Jersey Mike's and Forest River. This, this one is really exciting. Forest River RV Manufacturing came into town, took the site of on Palm and Acacia of the old skyline. Uh, at this point, they have right around 100 employees. They are ramping up and, and rehabbing the other two buildings there and eventually at, at build out within the next two to three years, they are estimating up to four to 500 jobs that will be added to our community. It is a very exciting thing. In our downtown, we have a renaissance going on and what, I, what is really great about this is that it is, it's, it's private property driven at this point. The Saturday Farmer's Market, a vision of Simon Shoe to bring life to the old downtown. I'm just going to read the Downtown Deli, Hemet Valley Art Association, the Bible Bookstore, C&L Coffee and Deli in the Depot, Shine Dance Studio, La Boutique, Diamond Valley Arts Council, El Galito Taco Shop, Taste Buds at Large, Robin Carey Salon and Spa, Shooter Sports Bar, all new to the downtown in the last two to three years. That is phenomenal. Shoe City is scheduled to open soon, in case you haven't noticed it on the corner with all the shoes in the windows, which are going away. Uh, and, and soon to open uh, is the remodeled uh, Gibble, well, it wasn't Gibble last time. It was Sharkey's. Sharkey's and before that it was Gibble. I'm one of those people who, who relate to what buildings were when I moved here 40 years ago, so you know, just bear with me. It uh, will be a new steakhouse, the 1888 Steakhouse. Uh, the downtown specific plan, which, which is adding to this and, and molding or creating the model for all of the future, through a grant from Southern California Association of Governments, the city received funding for a specific plan for downtown. We were able to hire a consultant group, and they came out and met with stakeholders from downtown, uh, property owners and, and businesses, tenants, this type of thing, getting their idea, their feel of what is needed or what they would like to see in a downtown. From that, we had a uh, community meeting up here, and it was well attended. Uh, over 110 people showed up to share their ideas of, of creating uh, a destination place, not only for visitors, but also for the people who live here, to have a safe, comprehensive area where you could shop and have culture and the arts and food entertainment. You have a combination of food and entertainment, food, entertainment, and culture. You've, you've got it made. Through that, we have uh, come up with a community action committee. Uh, we had uh, figured we'd have maybe 15, 16 people, that type of thing. We've had close to 50 applications from uh, community. So a combination of property owners, tenants, residents, the medical community, faith-based, we're all getting together, and I, the first meeting, help me out, Bonnie, September 23rd, something like that. We will be meeting here at the library to have the first round of getting specific ideas on, on walkways, uh, building design, traffic flows, bicycle paths, everything, like I said, that, that makes a community center. Uh, where are you? There you are. All of it built and on the, the rich heritage of this valley, of the, the agricultural background that we have, but also on the, the heritage of the Ramona pageant. 
street art that embraces the heritage of the Native American Indians who are here, but also of, of the other groups of people, like I said, the farmers, the agriculture. We have so much we can build on and to create a destination and a place that the for the entire city of Hemet. And with that, um, you know, we all come back to the, the bottom dollar. And we are working to balance our budget. We are looking at everything possible in the ways of changing how we do business, being more effective in how we do business. And Tuesday night, uh, the council approved the final step in, in a plan to reduce one of our biggest uh, deficit issues, which is the retiree benef medical benefits. And a few years ago, uh, the city had made a decision to uh, have retiree medical for their employees. It was a great idea. Nobody had any idea where medical costs were going to go in the future. But as we stand right now, it is a major part of our deficit uh, this year, over three, two and a half million to three million dollars. And through that, we, we said, you know, we've, we've got to change how we do this. So our, our staff was just amazing in coming up with a plan, working with our insurance agent, reached out to all of the retirees. And, you know, that's the wonderful part. They all stepped forward and said, so long as you don't cut our benefits, we are willing to change our benefits because the plans we had were just skyrocketing and with the Affordable Care Act, we were going to get hit with a Cadillac tax of 750000 to a million dollars the first year. So to cut that short, we, uh, with their agreement, uh, we finalized the plan. This is being put into place. We figure over the next five years, we will save an estimated $13 million in medical costs for retirees. And I want to thank them for the fact that they are willing to, to step up and make changes. And as I said, change is how we're going to go forward. You know, we are making progress. We have capable staff, but we deal with reality. The reality is we have not pulled out of the recession completely. Our prices, uh, home prices, are not going up as fast as other communities are, but everybody is working on it. The strength of this community is the dedication of the people. That dedication, along with the department staff, or department heads and staff, are what's going to, to retain Hemet, uh, take us on our path to recovery, and while we still have many, many obstacles to overcome, Together, we can get this done. We have a fantastic police department, fire department, planning department. Everybody at the city is working to the same goal, and they are working for the people that live here. And I know the people that live here have the same goal in mind, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't have a love for this community and for where we have been and have a hope for the future. Someone made the comment the other day that it was one of our staff members who had been at uh, Hemet Valley Mall for the business expo from the chamber. And his comment was that he had had such a great time talking to people and was amazed at how enthusiastic everybody was, not only about the downtown specific plan, but just about being there and in being engaged in our community. And his comment was, they really have a heart for Hemet. And I like that. I, I think everyone in here has a heart for Hemet or you wouldn't be here. So there is hope. Uh, we will get through this. We have good people working with us and for us. So with that, go back to work, earn more money, get more sales tax, more property tax. Help us all out. Thank you so much for coming. Where's Dave? Is Dave going to close it out? Oh, you know something. Just a second. That's why I was late. Yeah. <laughs> he, he knows I do this. This is what I do best. I've got to tell you what happened last night. 
Last night I went over to Hemet High and Alonzo uh, Ledesma from San Jacinto was there. There was a, a soccer game with an international team from Mexico and the local Hemet San Jacinto soccer team. And I don't know what the final score was, but we were doing really good, which means we had no score when, when I left at halftime. Anyway, the exciting thing was meeting these kids, seeing the joy and the energy, but also the parent support in the stands. There was about 400 parents there. And the really terrific thing, and, and look, Alonzo has it on video, was that they allowed me to do the ceremonial kick to start the second half. It was the hardest kick last night. <laughs> In dress and heels on a soccer field, it was great. They are the future of our, our city, of our valley, and they were so enthusiastic, and it was just, it was just a, an honor to meet all of them. That community is what I am so proud of. Thank you again. See, if I had been on time, you wouldn't have heard that great story, so I apologize. Um, thank you for coming. We'd like to thank the sponsors that made this, this um, event possible. In addition to the city of Hemet, Burke William Sorensen, our city attorney firm, Eric Vale, thank you. <laughs> CRNR, Alex Bronovich, thank you for your support. Our wonderful neighbors at Saboba, Rosemary Murillo came in late. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. <laughs> our partners at SoCal Gas and uh, RTA. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. And uh, the state of the city is thumbs up. Good job, Mayor.